Hey everyone, it's Sydney. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you're new, welcome. I make videos about my experience going to prison. So please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Today's video is specifically for people that have found themselves in a similar situation to where they're going to end up going to prison or maybe you have a loved one or someone you know that is getting ready to do time. It can be really scary, especially if you've never been through before, if you're like me and never expected to ever find yourself behind bars and next thing you know, that is looking like the outcome and you have no idea what to expect. I promise you, it is not as bad as whatever you are imagining right now. And so I'm gonna give you some advice and some tips and just hopefully some peace of mind <laughs> because I promise you will be able to get through it. I got through it, I'm doing totally fine now. So, so just a little recap of my personal experience. I got arrested for selling coke when I was a junior in college and then since it was my first time ever getting in trouble with the law, I was let out after my first night in jail and was able to continue the court process from home rather than staying in jail. And so it took about a year before I actually took my plea deal. I was working constantly with my lawyer and the prosecuting attorney to try to get a better deal, but they would not give me anything less than a one year prison sentence. So I got sentenced to a year. I did turn myself in technically. I know some people have been asking about that, um, but we had set a date with the prosecutor and the judge, like this is the day that I'm gonna go in and take my plea deal, go into jail, and then eventually get um, transferred, transported to prison. From the time that I initially got arrested to when I went to prison, uh, it was a total roller co coaster, like the worst year of my life, worse than the actual year I spent in prison, just because I had no idea what to expect. I was super scared, super nervous, super stressed out all the time of just regretting every decision that I had made leading up to that point and wishing I could take it back, but knowing that I couldn't, really hating myself. And then about three months before I, went into prison, I accepted, you know what, like this is what's gonna happen and I can't change that, so why would I waste any more time feeling so shitty? Like, I'm already gonna have a year of my life taken away from me when I'm going into prison, but like, I might as well make the most of that time, so I set a lot of goals for myself. I told myself, you know what, I don't know what to expect, but I have to hope for the best and started really getting into looking into like the law of attraction and stuff like that and I read a lot of books and like listened to a lot of spiritual teachers you could call them that taught me a lot about the law of attraction and just like what you think about and what you put your focus on is what you will attract more of in life that's what will expand and turn into your reality and I really started to believe that before going into prison and then I held to that belief the whole time I was in prison and I promise you like it worked for me a hundred percent so the most important thing is to just have a positive mindset going into it I know it's scary and you might have no idea what you're about to walk into do not focus on that focus on what you want to happen what you want to achieve set some goals for yourself while you're in there I don't know how long you're going in for for me I was sentenced to a year but with my time off for good behavior as soon as I got into prison they said this is your actual earned release date and I only ended up doing about eight months I truly feel like I was able to use the time I spent in prison to my advantage and really grow as a person I know that I felt like it was really unfair especially when you see people that are doing absolutely no prison time for crimes that I personally believe are way worse than mine, like Brock Turner doing six months for raping an unconscious girl. I think that everything happens for a reason and I truly think that the time I spent in prison made me a better person. I learned so much from it and I allowed myself to really grow from that experience. So that's my, my biggest piece of advice is to just set goals for yourself and stay positive, focus on the good. Always focus on the good. I promise that things are never as bad as you expect them to be, so don't worry too much. But do what you can to prepare before going in and try your best to enjoy this time that you have before that. 
Second piece of advice is that it's very, very helpful to have a support system on the outside. So even if it's just one person, please try to find that one person that will be there for you that you can talk to on the outside. I was very blessed to have a very supportive family and a good group of friends. So what I did was I memorized one person's phone number, one of my best friend's phone numbers, and I gave her a list of every single person's phone number that I wanted to be able to get in contact with while I was in. So I did that before I went in. I went through my phone and made a list for her and gave it to her. And then I memorized her phone number so that when I finally was able to make a phone call, I called her and she would give me all the phone numbers so I could write them down. It's incredibly important to have someone that can put money on your books, even if it's not even if they don't want to be spending their money on you, if you can give them a little bit of money going in, someone that you can trust that you can say, hey, here's this money, can you send me this much money when I ask for it to put on my phone, to put on my spendable, medical, whatever you need. You can make collect calls, but it is better to just be able to have someone to put money onto your phone account as well as onto your spendable account so you can buy the necessary things, envelopes, hygiene products, food, stuff like that through commissary or canteen, whatever you want to call it. If you do not have that, if you don't have that luxury, there is the indigent option where you basically don't need to have the money on your books to get those things. It's like the essentials that you need, you know, toothpaste and stuff like that. There are indigent options. And then basically once you get a job in there and you start making some money, it will just be taken out of that. One piece of advice for the money situation is that anything over $10 that gets put onto your books, they take 55% of anything over $10. So what a lot of people did is have someone put $10 each week. And so then you spend the $10 and then it resets to zero and you can get another $10. There's like a fee for putting it on. So it just really depends. I didn't have that. I usually my parents would put on like money here and there, but we started to realize if it was like 50 bucks, you re I was really only getting like $20 of it. So it's definitely more beneficial to get the $10 every week. So that's an option that I would look into exploring. It's not like all of that 55% just gets taken in university again. Some of it goes to your LFOs or legal fines. Some of it goes into a savings account for you that you will get as a check when you get out. But a majority of it is like just a cost of living fee that you otherwise wouldn't have to pay. Another thing that makes having someone on the outside very useful is that they can send you books through a approved bookstore website or Amazon. So I found out about that before I went in. So I made like a list of some books that I wanted uh, my friends and my family to send me. There is a library there, but I really wanted to read a lot of self-help books. I was dead set on making this time that I was gonna be spending in prison matter and make a difference for me. So I wanted to use every single moment of it to better myself. So I read a ton of self-help books, meditated a lot and truly felt like, yes, it sucks that I'm in prison, but at least I have this time that I otherwise would never have to fully focus on bettering myself as a person, moving towards a more enlightened state of mind, and just all that stress and clutter of the everyday lifestyle, the work, school, and everything that was going on it was just put on hold. And it was like a lot of time for just myself. So that can be a very terrifying thing if you are not happy with yourself and you're just gonna spend it moping around and feeling bad for yourself and making yourself the victim. Or it can be a very good thing. Sorry if the angle just shifted a little bit. I am still recording from my phone and I just got a phone call, so. Saving up for a camera though, so hopefully that comes soon. Anyway, if you're gonna be brand new to prison and know nothing about it and you're about to go in, you're not gonna get like a prison 101 going in. They really just throw you to the dogs. So it's a lot of learning as you go. So make sure you ask questions. If you're uncertain about something, ask questions. And the cops are gonna be annoyed of you. The correctional officers, they're going to get pissed. They expect you to know everything. They like, I don't know why. It's like everyone's first week in here. Why do you think that we just know what to do without anyone telling us, but. 
ask questions and that will avoid you getting into trouble or misunderstanding something. Read your little packet that you get when you go in and yeah, they're not gonna give you just like a whole rundown of how prison works and you'll have to learn that as you go. A big piece of advice that I knew was gonna be something that I was gonna have to work on before even going in is <sighs> pick your battles. I've always had a very hard time being disrespected by like authority figures, whether it was <laughs> like my parents or teachers or the police. I have a very hard time not being sassy if I feel like someone is talking to me any type of way that I don't like. And in there, the police will use that to their advantage. The correctional officers, a lot of them are on a huge power trip and they will openly disrespect you, be incredibly rude just because they know that if you were to retaliate or talk back to them, they can get you into trouble. They can put you in the hole. They can give you an infraction, any sort of thing. So you really have to learn to just take it. And hopefully that won't happen to you too much. Um, there were definitely certain inmates that specific correctional officers just picked on and they gave them a really hard time. And I think it's hard for them to understand what we're going through because in their eyes, we're just criminals and we're just bad people. And that isn't the case, you know, not everyone is in there for being a terrible person. A lot of people just make a mistake or they get put in a situation that led them down a bad path. And a lot of the cops in there are just a, on a huge power trip and gonna use their authority and use their position of power to talk down to you and it's not gonna feel good. It's really gonna suck, but pick your battles. Do not take it personal. Stand up for yourself if you feel like it's necessary, but don't fight it. Don't fight back because that's how you end up getting put in the shoe. When it comes to other inmates, <laughs> it's pretty petty, honestly. Like there's a lot of drama. I felt like I was back in high school and I, get that people feel like they have nothing better to do in there besides stir up stupid drama but to me that's just like I don't see the point in that I wasn't there I wasn't gonna have it you know I was there to focus on myself work on myself so I definitely recommend just keeping to yourself when it comes to stuff like that people will try to involve you in shit just tell them that you're not about it don't give them the time of day don't give into it Mind your business and just don't get involved. Use this time for you. And also stand your ground. There are gonna be people in there that will try to take advantage of you and they're gonna push and see how far they can take it. So for me, that was very difficult because I'm a very nice person. I want to be able to help people, but there are people that are gonna try to use their sob story to try to get stuff out of you. And you have to really be able to decide for yourself whether you actually are comfortable with helping them or doing something because sometimes people will ask you to do things that are against the rules so it's really up to you but do not just say yes or no right away don't get coerced into doing something you do not want to do don't let people take advantage of you they will push their limits and see how far they can go and if you say yes to something the first time they're gonna expect more and more and more of you so just be really careful with that i guess the final thing i want to say if you're wanting to stay in contact with people on the outside whether it's your friends your family your boyfriend your girlfriend whatever your husband wife i don't know it's important that they look on the website of either the doc or whatever prison you're going to be going to to find your doc number um, which is basically going to be your identification number, which is how you'll be identified the whole time you're there. And that is also how they can get in contact with you via JPay, which is an online prison communications. Um, at the prisons I was at, we had like a little kiosk that we could log into and we could get messages through from people on the outside. It's like a secure emailing system, basically. And they can also get your address and send you letters in the mail but just make sure that they go on the website and see like what all the rules are for that because a lot of mail gets turned away because people will send letters that have like glitter or something that is just not allowed there's like very specific rules they can send pictures but not more than 10 they can send cards but there's a lot of 
specific things that they can't do. Nothing can be written in crayon. Nothing can be written in like gel pen or have glitter on it. And it's just a bunch of random crazy rules. It It's gonna be okay though. I promise you that you'll get through it. I mean, it kind of seemed like where I was was a, a real walk in the park because I was in minimum security, but I did also know a lot of people that had been through closed custody unit or max security first and then go into minimum security. You get used to it, you know, you will adjust and nothing's ever as bad as you think it's going to be. I went through some crazy things when I first went into prison, but a positive mindset will allow you to get any through anything. My heart goes out to you if you are a loved one of someone that is incarcerated or about to be incarcerated or if you personally are, especially if you have family, children that you're going to be away from. It's going to be really tough. Make sure you stay in contact with each other. There's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days, but just be careful who you trust in there. But I promise you will be able to make some friends. Just keep looking forward. See how you can make yourself a better person from this experience and plan for your future. You'll have so much free time to set goals for yourself and a plan for how you're going to achieve those goals once you're out. Everything will work out. If you have any more questions, I'm totally down to do a, another Q&A about prison. So leave your comments below and I will see you guys next time. Make sure you subscribe.